Welcome back, lords and ladies, to another Strong Arms and Swiss Steel number two House Lannister Hot Siege. Yeah, almost forgot what we were doing for a moment, which is terrible. But uh, yes, Rob ran away. He did not do anything about the seizures, which is super nice. So I can just pretty much this is what I decided to go with. that grab them toss him there that way uh, Tywin was able to sack it but uh, more moreover actually we were able to do this one and that one with really low casualties then I end up taking everybody I actually decided to split the units so we'll say something like that. And then I throw that, grab everything else, just say like right there maybe, don't remember. And we have Sandor there, grab what we can here. And then we hide Tywin right there. Now you might be wondering why the hell I'm doing that. Well, as uh, Stannis is moving up, I actually was able to look at his troop his full troop uh, compilation so he's got five swordsmen two four six seven armored spearmen and a full cell sword spearmen so pretty much eight armored spearmen so we have one two three four five swordsmen one two three four five six seven eight so we have the same amount of heavy infantry <clears throat> aside from a Lannister maceman. So, in light of that, I don't want to recruit five more heavy infantry units before I can move on salt pans. So rather, I'll just retrain these guys. Uh, not those guys, those are too expensive. We'll do that and bring down Tywin's men. So we'll have, say, like a half a stack or so of uh, levy spearmen on the one of these points well, that's true we can only do two stacks so it would make sense that we bring our best stacks to the game right right yeah 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 that probably makes the most sense smart man to uh, put a fort there but I'm glad I put mine there before you could uh, move in I'm not going to show you the exact forwarding because I'll just get to it and eventually anyways. Uh, as it stands over here, we could attack Golden Grove. I'm just going to grab one unit of spears just to show you how far away we could get. I didn't realize we could get that far. That's where I end up making it. We use Stafford. All these men. And we build a fort with him before we move our troops there. Now, even if we moved everybody, it's we just we just don't have enough men. Plus, their crossbowmen get an extra bonus on the defensive. Plus, they have. A shit ton of heavy infantry with silver chevroned generals defending their ass. So even if I had a night fighter in range, I still would not have been able to do this. Which I didn't, actually, uh, I couldn't have. So yeah, clear defeat. I didn't waste much time trying to, uh, auto resolve that one. But yeah, anyways, we end up grabbing. Uh, no. Actually, I don't end up uh, sacking it because I'm able to recruit a ship right off the bat. And I could do the same at Seaguard, but I needed the money to sack it. <laughs> so, but at least the ports, all the port cities that I sack, so Old, Old Oak and uh, Seaguard, ports are still intact, so that's good to go. I end up leaving you. I actually take Davin with us instead of leaving him on land because they have 
Let me just show you guys. They have supposedly four units of armored swordsmen and a unit of spearmen. For the benefit of the doubt, I treated that like a swordsman unit. It would be, well, actually, I treated it still like an armored armored spearman because I didn't feel like it would be an armored swordsman. But regardless, uh, we got draws with the uh, Kraycall. But then I brought in Davin, and we had better draws. So they had they lost more troops, and we lost less troops. So, anyways, I'll show you how this happens. Grab them, toss them over here. Just enough. Actually, with Davin, it's just just the first tile and just enough to besiege the place. <laughs> so we'll undoubtedly lose that sailor. <clears throat> Losing my voice. I didn't drink a lot of water when I was playing through this. I'm going to say no to that. Uh, we're able to recruit a sailor, a spearman, and another spearman. Militia and sergeant spearman. And we'll be able to grab these reinforcements. Those men will toss monitories with his, some of his troops. We'll be recruiting a crap ton, and I mean a crap ton of men this turn. So we'll be recruiting in all four of our bordering, bordering towns, and Old Oak, and here because it's getting unhappy. And we'll be retraining these men to make that more men. I did not have enough money to train or recruit over here I actually had just enough money to put down two forts over here after sacking these two places but yeah I knew that I needed to split up the army that Clegane had because I needed to send help down here I can't take down Stannis with just Kevin's men and hope that we win we need to win back salt pans and we need to have a good defense against the river at the same time now I could do it where I only need, say, one more fort over here. Something like that. And the other one should be about right there. So I only need enough men for one more fort over here next turn. And one more general, which could be Blunt, Moore, or Tywin himself. Could be Ty You know what? Why not Tywin? He's just collecting dust. I don't... Did I ever have anybody get Raven Tree? Oh my gosh. If I didn't, I so could have just tossed Blunt into Raven Tree. Son of a... Frick. Frack. Flap. Oh well. Uh, let's see. We probably have enough... Yeah, he could give away his plus two loyalty, plus... Uh, more could give away his plus one for Heron Hall to make that at least a plus... Plus five... So, Blunt would be fine. He'll be the uh, Lannister fort man. But this would put me up to six forts on the freaking Stannis front again. So, I'm really putting too much over there. But it's best that I put a fort here. So, then I'm just, it's one choke point. They could go around over here. But... Uh, that would take more time. I don't, I, you know what, I don't know if they want to do that. If they did, they would be abandoning their position and I would have just enough movement points to fort around and steal the settlements. Ha ha ha. But yeah, it was very well played on uh, Gimli's part to have this, um, uh... how can I just... The uh, movement was blocked, so it was just really good on his part to block that off so I couldn't get reinforcements here to hit Tali head on. The Tallies? No, a Tali, the Tallies. But it looks like his son is suffering from some loyalty issues. But a uh, good thing is that he does not have any extra uh, movement, it's still 10%. 
so most of my men are on par with that. My only hope is that uh, Renly does not have any further uh, reinforcements, because if he has any men, they would have to be somewhere around right here to make it on the island. Or no, they would have to be there to attack Kraycall on his tile from their ship, which might not be the best idea, having a, a captain lead the attack against a six-star general. I think I did the test with a five-star Devon Lannister, and it did it at least 200 to 300 casualties less on the draws. So it might it feels a lot like a risk, and it really is a risk if there's more than any troops there. We could easily lose Devon, which I would certainly be unhappy about. But it's a risk I need to take now. If I can take another one of their ports away this early on, that would be spectacular. Because then they would only have Old Town and the Abba. Which means I would slowly outdo them in sailor production. And this army alone is actually pretty well off, so if it's marooned here on the island, it'll be fine on its own. Be making enough money if we could put this on very high taxes i'd say maybe a thousand gold for lord hewitt's town now it wouldn't pay for all my troops but it would do considerably better than nothing now if these guys came knocking at the door eh, we'd probably be okay but if they have any other night fighters come along with a large army lord hewitt's town would be reclaimed now, I thought about just waiting on this until, say, we get our fleet built up and it's in range. And I thought, no, the best thing to do is make them afraid that we have our fleet in range and that I'm trying to break through them right now. Or just make them fear for their lives. That's all I want. Because they haven't come at us yet, so that's all I want to keep, keep going. Our ships won't be done until next turn, so... Yeah. Anyways, a war galley was hit by storms or something, so that sucks. Uh, anyways, this oh, is still for either way. But I chose to be cool and do it this way, because why not? There we go. That's the main bits. I'll show you exactly what it looks like in just... Oh, actually, I forgot to show you Stark ships that I can attack. And you know what? I'll show you where frickin' Rob Stark himself is. Now, I got a clear victory, but you can't win them all when you're recording. And on auto-resolve, too. Not unless it's like the uh, Swiss mod hot seat, which was annoying as shit. See, there are our Starkey friends. Jonos Bracken, the last river lord to frickin' live. Magard. I'll show you exactly what uh, their composition is if I can, but I can't. I looked at it earlier because I, I got him out with the princess, attacked him, and saw. Uh, Flint's finger is actually pretty un defended and my hunch is that they'll try and get robbed back to the mainland with a ship now if that hunch is true that'd be really good for me if if he leaves him on Flint's finger and I besiege the port I might have to bring Tywin back up so then we could kill uh kill Rob off eventually because he'll be he'll be stuck in Flint's finger for the entirety of the game if I just have that thing under siege. <laughs> but the best case scenario is that I take Flint's finger and then we have no worries. I don't even really need to take um, Grey Water Watch, but I just want to take it away from them. One less place for them to have, the better.
So yeah, we'll make it to Grey Water Watch two turns. It takes about two turns just to go all the way up this way. Just to find where the Mount Kaelin is. Anyways, I'm going to skip and I'll see you in a sec. Alright, welcome back. I uh, forgot to show you the intern thing, but it pops up every time you reload the turn. So first militarily, of course, financially third, so somebody else is beating us. I don't really care who it is because I bought Mercs last turn and it didn't really pay off. It didn't help enough. I'm not, really, I'm not mad about it. I'm actually ha happy that I bought some because now I have more troops in the re re vicinity, the region, the thing. So anyways, we left Monterey's here, Balon as far as he could go, Stafford, and Devon. You wouldn't have thought that from there, somewhere over here in the woods to here, Devon could move that far, but you forget, he's a plus 25% movement. So I ended up getting five traits when I attacked Old Oak. All I wanted was Brave. And marks of war. If I got a chivalry, I would have been fine. Ah, uh, we got both soft judge and fair rule, and winning first for killing too many men and occupying, just occupying old oak, so we could get more sailors. Stupid freaking game, I'm telling you. Oh, also, uh, we moved uh, Merlin Buckwell, Merlon. Because he's the only night fighter on this side of the map. So I figured I'd throw him over here just in case. I don't know if there's actually any army on the horizon. Next turn, I should be able to see anything if it's in the freaking woods. Actually, this turn I should have been able to. But I was quite a little bit out of range. So, yeah. You know, I would have forded this off over here, but I kind of wanted to see if uh, Stannis would attempt to go that far, and just I just wanted to see if he'd jump ship right there and do something. Maybe he'd put a fort over here or two, be there, and you're like, haha, you can't touch me, and then, oh yes we can. <laughs> I actually tested to see how far he could scout out with Stannis, which is insane in and of itself. Plus 30% movement for a general who's on a ship who can move anywhere, go anywhere, see anything. Oh yeah, he can easily see Mandon Moore if he wants to. If he does, he better know that I'm coming for blood. This town is mine, and I'm coming back for it. Oh, I forgot to mention... Uh, He's got antlers under siege. I got some archers, so maybe it'll cost him at least 20 casualties. I don't know. Okay, we'll see. Yeah, maybe 20. 20, we'll hope for 20 is the best. Maybe he'll use the general to make it even less. I know uh, at Old Oak, I actually took zero, and I took out a general's bodyguard. Thanks to uh, Davin. That's why we have a pristine looking lineup. And I wanted it that way because you don't know if this is going to work. This could be my backfire plan right here. But I believe that Davin can do it. And I believe he will. Now, I even made sure that I'd be able to kill these guys because they had so many crosswomen. I was afraid that they would be able to defend very well and defeat me so just in case I did that and we easily win take some heavy casualties but that's that I just want to see if uh, Renly's got enough guts to besiege this port and if he goes for both ports I'd laugh I mean I wouldn't have any 
ships to stop him, but if I'm able to destroy his army here, then oof. Besides, if he goes for, you know, if he could besiege this port or that port and deny them from getting back. So they're marooned on the island and he could use that reinforcement army to besiege Old Oak, which I've anticipated. So Monterey's is in range of that. He's in range of that. He's in range of everything like Davin was last turn. He could be in range of uh, good old Lannisport in two turns. Oh. This turn was one of the hardest because I had to rethink my strategy and replan out in advance how the hell I want to do, the, do this. Like, do I want Leffert to keep going? Yes, I want him to keep going in case Randall decides to go up north. I doubt he will, but just in case. Or if that army paranoia that there's an army coming from this way is real, then just in case. Like, uh, how many forts I would need over here or where to put them. Just to make sure these men are in range, which these guys should be in range next because I strategically put them on the road. So these men, these men, these men, and all of these cavalry. Oh, I didn't realize that one was being free upkeep too. Nice. So yeah. I know I won't be able to reclaim salt pans for a while, but I'll be darned if I leave it in the hands of Stannis the Manus, the menacing Manus of Baratheon. So, oh, I forgot to, yeah, actually, no, I'm going to keep Joy Lannister just out of range of them, just in range so I can keep an eye on what they're doing. If they send any troops down, Clegane is in range to kick their ass, and it's nice to have. All three of these settlements give me back some money, much needed income that I need. Next turn will be better when I don't have, uh, well, 850 gold times 8 out of my pocket. Actually, times 9 because of that one, and you can almost say the same for the sailor. So, yeah, and then we won't have to worry about recruiting more ships. I'm actually have an inkling that some of my ports will be ready, like this one, to give me more sailors. Now, it would have been smart for me to get another sailor from Seaguard this turn, but it's so far away. So we'll say three turns relatively from there. So we'll say about five turns plus the three to make it, so it'll be about eight turns before it gets down here. That's, that's not bad in retrospect, but when I could have the money now, it's kind of needed now. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, that's pretty much all I got. Next turn, I'll smash the rest of their fleet. Hopefully they have one ship so they can get robbed the hell out of here. I don't want to have to deal with the bastard. And then I can corner that fleet, kill it off, or besiege it in the f port and kill it. I just want to I just want to finish up Stark in the north get him to a point where I don't have to worry too much about them. And I might need to recruit some men and the twins and have a standing army here or bring it up to over here. We'll have to see. Yeah, I might actually bring Clegane back. So bring Clegane's men back once we're done with the French finger. And we'll utilize the Clegane Bros to defend the Neck against any possible invasion. But if push comes to shove, we'll leave Greywater Watch. We'll give up East Twins and we'll just defend from West Twins. That's why it's a great choke point. I'm just pushing forward because I can and I need the money for sacking, so that's why I'm doing it now. Future, if I and backing off like I backed off from the crown lands, it's because I need I'll need a choke point at some point. I still can't see who that guy is in the fort. But I really hope Renly is putting some pressure on Stannis. I think he might be or Stannis might be vice versa because uh he does not have any ships in his docks. And Dragonstone is kind of undefended, which 
kind of rooting for uh, Renly to send like a lone unit to sack his ancestral home of Dragonstone. Targaryen ancestry, whatever. Anyways, I'm going to end here. Just want to say thank you everybody for watching. Good luck to everybody else in the hot seat, and I'll see you next time. Very night out.